and my work boots, which are only dirty from walking the streets of Newark, not from doing any work at all. This is what I wear on a daily basis, and no one ever questioned it as to why I have no oil trucks, no employees, the uniforms don't match the name on the window, no one ever questioned anything. Yeah. Hey, Joe. Sal. Hello, Mike. How, How you doing? How you doing? All right. Are you good? How's everything, huh? Yeah, Mike. From Channel 5 News in New York, this is the 10 o'clock news. A 14-month undercover investigation climaxed with the arrest of dozens of alleged mobsters in, this morning in New Jersey. Frank Grimes and a Channel 5 camera crew were up early to join 200 state police as they raided the suspects' homes. Early this morning, North Jersey, Operation Intrepid is underway. Tommy Pee Wee DePhillips arrested at his home. One of 41 alleged leaders and associates of the Genovese organized crime family operating in northern New Jersey that were rounded up today by New Jersey State Police. Andy Gerardo, head of the New Jersey Genovese faction. Ralph Vaccaro, second in command to Gerardo. Gerardo and the others are charged with running a million dollar a week racketeering operation centered in, but not limited to, the Newark area. The key to the case was this oil company in North Newark. The sign says premium petroleum, but cops say the company didn't sell much oil. It didn't even have an oil truck. It was a phony company set up by the state police, set up right next door to Andy Gerardo's headquarters. Only a thin wall separated the undercover cops in premium petroleum from the alleged hoods in Gerardo's headquarters. Using bugs and a video camera, cops were able to see and record the group's daily activities, which included, at times, running a casino there. A grand jury has been hearing evidence against the Gerardo faction, and indictments are expected. Frank Grimes, Channel 5 News. <laughs> this is where it started, right here in this intersection in January 1984. I was coming south on North 8th Street towards the intersection of Bloomfield Avenue here. Upon arriving here, I observed a disturbance in an auto, what looked to be an auto accident. One white guy, two black guys. I zipped the truck right over here, slammed it in park, and jumped out to go to the help of the guy in trouble, the white guy, two against one. I evened up the odds. I smacked one of the guys, knocked him on his ass, and one was invited into the luncheonette for breakfast by the white guy. I parked the truck, and I went right into the luncheonette. As I come in there, this guy, Andy, he introduced himself as Andy Gerard. I said, I'm Mike Russell. He says, you sit in my boot. He sits down, he says, why'd you help me out? I said, I'd do it for anybody. I'm an ex-cop. Perks up, he says, where, when? He goes, what's happening with this ex-cop stuff? I tell him, East Orange, and I left the police force because I wanted to try self-employment. I got young kids. As I'm sitting in the booth eating breakfast with him, in comes Tommy D. Phillips, also known as Pee Wee, notorious gangster from the North Ward for many years, a very prominent bookmaker. Pee Wee says, that's great, you helped out our boss, this and that. Now I'm beginning to realize what's going on with this guy, Andy. As I leave the luncheonette, I call up Nick, a friend of mine, Nick Oriello, a sergeant with the New Jersey State Police. Call him right up and I said, Nick, tell me who this guy, Andy Gerard is. He says, he's a Genovese boss. I said, oh yeah? Well, I just made his acquaintance and a guy just bought me breakfast. And now I can come and go from the luncheonette where he has his breakfast. Right, Nick says, Mike, please today, stay okay? on it, you know. Stay with it okay, and see what you can please. hear for me. Right by. I become a fixture at this luncheonette. I'm there five days a week. I begin to identify the gangsters through plate numbers and who's meeting Andy at what time every day. Nick begins to pay me for this after a while. And as the summer rolls around, Jersey's hit with a garbage strike. In the middle of the summer, 
Andy says to me, hey, you drive a truck, right, Mike? I said, yeah. He says, do me a favor. I want you to go on a garbage route and break the strike. I'll just give you a helper. That went good, and the state cops are getting excited because now it's really getting serious. Next, I go over to Jersey Carding and dispose of toxic waste. I put a 55-gallon drum of unknown toxic stuff in my truck, filled with restaurant garbage, and went to the dumps and dumped it. Of course, I'm reporting all this back to Nick. Now I'm getting in good with the bad guys, but it took months of doing this dirty shit for them before one of the hoods gave me my big break in the case. James Palmieri, also known as JP, underboss for Joe Zara, uh, made guy. He says, Mike, we're gonna rent the store in front of the club. You know, anybody who wants it, you know, if you want it for, you know, I said, Jesus, Jay, you know, that'd be real good for my oil company, and it'd be great for it. Right on the corner there, I'll let her up the window, I said, but I'm 99% sure I want it, but give me about a couple hours just to make sure. He says, all right. He says, write your name, address, and your phone number down, your date of birth, and all this stuff. I knew what that was for because they got cops in their pocket, and they were going to have me checked out. But that goes with the game. And I called Nick up, and I said, Nick, we can rent the store right in front of the clubhouse. He said, what are we going to put in there? I said, we put the oil company in there. He said, okay. He said, uh, let me get on the phone. And Nick called the master sergeant, he called the lieutenant, he called a captain, and then he got to a lieutenant colonel and said, rent the store. The New Jersey State Police began picking up the tab for the entire premium petroleum operation. Every day that went by, I spent less and less time as an oil man. Within a month, I was full-time undercover for the police. My store is on the ground floor and the mob headquarters are in the back. The store is separated from their place by a thin partition with a door in it. But we keep the door locked between the two of us. I walk around the building and go in the outside door. Hey, Benny. What are you doing, Ben? <laughs> are you? And they were very friendly to me. I see, got they wanted to know money. what kind of business I was in, what I was doing. But due what? to the fact Joe Zara had me checked out, and I was all right with Joe, he owns the building, he's a made guy, I'm in. And it's business as usual. And now I'm walking right among them. And the more I'm in here, the more they get to see me about a month in here, then they're conducting business in front of me. Because I'm no stranger to them. They're not hiding their gambling records. They're not stopping talking about them. And I'm walking right among them when they're conducting business. Eyeballing the whole thing. At which time I'm calling every move into Nick and state police are documenting everything that I call in. I get to know the whole neighborhood. I uncover all the joints where they run their rackets. This is North Newark. This is the uh, last Italian stronghold. This is li their little Italy section of actually North Jersey. They, even though they don't live here, 90% of them live out in residential areas. Make a right here. This is where they come to conduct their business. In this North Newark area, there are two mob headquarters, four social clubs or casinos, and numerous